Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered that the freezing point of water is actually not zero degrees? We're taught from an early age that ice, like this, forms when water reaches that magic temperature of zero degrees Celsius. But that's not always true, and the science behind this phenomenon has been held accountable for crashing aeroplanes. Let me explain. For water to become ice, the H2O molecules must become arranged in a special array to form crystalline ice, but getting the molecules to do this is really hard. In fact, they need help to get started. Some sort of initiation point to get those first few molecules correctly aligned in the ice lattice structure. This help may come from an impurity in the water, a bit of dust or even another ice particle. These so-called nucleators provide a surface for the ice crystals to grow on. Regular tap water is full of impurities, so there are plenty of opportunities for ice crystals to grow when the water reaches zero degrees Celsius. However, take this bottle of pure water. It's been distilled so there are no impurities, so there's nothing to kickstart the ice crystal growth. As a result, this water is still liquid, despite the fact it's been kept at minus eight degrees Celsius. It's said to be supercooled. However, as soon as we add some ice to the water, the ice crystals should start forming. And sure enough, the ice has provided the perfect nucleation point. That is amazing. It's been discovered that the actual freezing point of pure water is minus 48 degrees Celsius. At this point, the liquid has to freeze. But amazingly, this supercooled phenomenon is not confined to a science lab. It does occur in nature. Liquid water as cold as minus 40 degrees Celsius has been found in clouds. Here the water has been condensed out of the atmosphere so it can be very pure. As remarkable as this is, it poses a massive danger to aeroplanes. Because as a plane flies into such a cloud, the supercooled liquid freezes as soon as it hits the plane because now it has a nucleation point. Let's see what happens when we pour the water over the plane. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wow! <laughs> right. Oh my goodness, it just looks like a slushy drink. <laughs> this is called in-flight icing when ice forms on the frontal surfaces of a plane. Often this will happen on the leading edges of the wings, the nose and the tail surfaces. Terrifyingly, the ice alters the airflow over the plane, which reduces the amount of lift generated by the plane and increases its drag, causing loss of altitude and ultimately loss of control. Thankfully, the vast majority of modern aircraft are equipped with ice protection systems to combat this, and a lot of flight planning takes place to ensure that this never happens. For more surprising science, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you soon on Earth Unplugged. First of all, shouting loudly will not trigger an avalanche, despite what you might have seen in the movies. Even a sonic boom or a low-flying helicopter right next to a mountain will only trigger an avalanche in very unstable conditions. Scientists have actually measured the water density of these clouds, and in one cubic meter of cloud, which is about this much, there is just a quarter of a gram of water, which is about this much.